Don't say my name in vain. What's going on guys? Thank you for watching. Wanted to make a video today to talk to you guys about a couple things that you could do for anybody who is transferring into a lifestyle where they're gonna be vegan or plant-based with their diet. I wanted to give you guys five vegan food hacks. If you're someone who isn't a part of this lifestyle, this will still benefit you because it gives you the option to do more things with your diet, to see how things are made without needing any of the stuff that could cause health problems down the road for us. And we all know all types of food, all types of things in America could cause these problems, but it's about minimalizing that risk. And I think that's what plant-based eating really does for us. I mean, tell me what disease you could get from eating plants. A lot of you who are vegan and new to the lifestyle, you at me on Twitter asking me, what do you do at a restaurant? What do you do when your family are a bunch of meat eaters, but you're the only vegan there? This lifestyle won't restrict you from being able to go out to eat with people who aren't vegan and enjoying food. You don't just crawl into a hole with vegetables and fruit and that's all you can eat the rest of your life. It's about being creative with you know, your palate, what you know you could eat, what you enjoy to eat, and uh, the foods that are made available to you. So if you go to a restaurant, immediately the thing that I would do, I would go to the side menu just to see what they have. Sometimes there'll be french fries there, sometimes there'll be mashed potatoes, sometimes there'll be greens, you know, like asparagus, side of broccoli, sometimes you'll have rice on the side. I mean, they're, the sides are the best. The sides are a vegan's friend at any restaurant. If you ask a waiter or waitress, I guarantee you guys will have a vegetarian or vegan option in most of these restaurants. These restaurants aren't going to throw you that menu immediately but I think in the coming future that you know there'll be a vegan vegetarian menu in every single restaurant when you sit down furthermore if they don't have any vegan or vegetarian menu options just give a simple request ask nicely hey can the chef maybe do this for me most of the time they're gonna tell you yes sometimes they'll tell you no just depends on the restaurant you're at all right don't feel embarrassed if you're you're up to order and you got to ask these questions just ask away at what you want to eat and don't be afraid to ask questions to your waiter or waitress that's what they're there for a meal prep hack that I found helpful for my life is to pre-boil rice, to pre-boil quinoa. Anything that you're gonna be including in your meal prep, make a shitload of it at first. And then you'll be able to keep it for a week and then pick at it as it goes. This way you don't have to boil rice every single time you want rice. This way you don't gotta boil quinoa every single time you want quinoa. And you know, the list goes on. Lentils, all that type of stuff. So these types of things are great. They're not meat, they're not dairy. They're not something that if you throw them in the fridge for a week, they're gonna go bad. If you just pre-set a bunch of this type of food, throw it in your fridge, this way all week you could just reheat anything up. It really does create an easier way for you to get these types of meals in your system. If you're someone who needs to eat a lot throughout the day, whether you do wanna weigh your meals and do all that stuff, this is still good for that. And for someone who doesn't wanna do that, it's just easy to just go into your fridge, pick out whatever you want, and throw it on a plate, and then you'll have it throughout that week. For those of you that don't want to use eggs, for those of you that don't want to use dairy, butter, or oils in your bacon, a couple things that I would use, one is applesauce. Applesauce is a good binder. It's got an array of uses for baking, especially for cookies, just to create a healthier additive. You could also use guar gum, you could use flaxseed. There's an abundance of replacements that you could use in baking to create baked goods just as good as they are when they're made the old fashioned way. Canned pumpkin is also a delicious binder that'll work just as good, especially in your baked goods. I mean, we all love the taste of pumpkin. I love it. I don't know about you guys out there, but everybody goes ape shit for pumpkin spice. So canned pumpkin, anything you want to use it for in baking, it will work just as good as butter, just as good as eggs, all of those binders that kind of hinder our health in the long run. Also to add to that, I have a lazy vegan food baking hack because I think a lot of people think that the baggage that comes with being vegan and having a plant-based type of diet is that you're gonna have to be like a Houdini in the kitchen and just like conjure these ridiculous recipes out of thin air from scratch. That's not the way it is at all. For instance, if you go into the supermarket and you wanna look for a cake mix that you wanna make, most of the time you'll be good, but just make sure you give the ingredient list a double check. If you just grab a club soda, a seltzer with that, and you mix those together, that's gonna give you the same exact effect as you would if you were gonna be using eggs, oils, butters, milk, whatever else you would throw into that cake mix. So that's like a lazier baking hack that's still just as easy and quick to do. I mean, for me, obviously, the faster I could cook something or bake something, the better. Definitely something that will be helpful and beneficial for you guys out there that love your sweets. What do we all think about when we think about breakfast? We think about eggs and bacon. Now, with veganism and plant-based eating, people think, oh, no more eggs, no more bacon, that sucks. Now, 
The way you can make some eggs using certain flours. One flour in particular is chickpea flour. Now you mix that in with a little bit of like nutritional yeast, some water, you throw a couple veggies in that and you cook that like a pancake. It rises, it looks like an omelet. You could fold it over to give it the same omelet look. And chickpea flour, full of protein, fiber, gluten free. I mean, the, the health benefits that come with this, it's a definite proven way to get eggs by not using eggs. Maybe in the future I'll have a recipe with this uh, for you guys. But how do you make the bacon you're asking? I know, I'm, I'm gonna get to it guys, don't worry. The, the vegan bacon, I mean, yeah, you could go buy a soy product. There are ways to get imitation bacon meats made out of soy in the supermarket. I've had a couple, I mean, they're good. We don't eat them all the time, they're just really salty. But if you were to get some coconut flakes, or you take an actual coconut and you shave it up, because of the fat content in that coconut, it absorbs flavor very well. You cook that in a little liquid smoke, and those coconuts get crispy. Depending on how big the coconut shaving flake, whatever you're cooking it with, will obviously be the size of the bacon piece that you're trying to cook. But you're gonna be able to replicate the same exact taste that you get with bacon because of the liquid smoke. But those are the main two ingredients, liquid smoke and coconut flakes. So I just gave you guys a way you can make eggs and bacon in the morning without having eggs or bacon. No pigs are dying. You're not getting the shitty health benefits, but you're getting the same exact meal and you don't have to feel guilty about it. This is something that is the easiest thing to replace. Why people are still drinking milk I have no idea. Milk for me needed to be flavored. My older brother used to get so pissed at me because whenever I had cereal, I would put a lot of milk in there because I didn't want my crunchy cereal and I would leave all the milk left over and just dump it out after, literally to the top of the bowl. Now I know a lot of you were raised on milk. I know milk probably has its benefits in some cultures, medicinally maybe. I have a friend and he told me when I got my surgery, if I was to like warm milk up with a bunch of turmeric, it would really help with the inflammation and stuff like that. Maybe that helps certain people, maybe it doesn't. I'm not talking about using milk for medicinal reasons. I'm talking about the way milk's used in food, the way milk's drank in the household. If our milk that's made for us has low amounts of protein as opposed to baby calf milk, why do you think that we have health problems? Why do you think dairy causes these problems? It's not our milk. It's for that calf to grow into a big, uh, I don't even know the weight of a cow off the top of my head. Probably really fucking heavy though. That's designed to turn that calf into a big, huge animal. It is so easy to just replace milk with non-dairy replacements. It's so readily available out there. If you guys want ice cream and you're scared because you're not gonna be able to have your ice cream anymore when you're a plant-based vegan eater, there are plenty of ice creams out there that are made from cashew milk, almond milk. If you freeze bananas, throw that into a blender, boom, vegan ice cream. I love bananas, but if you throw that in with anything else, it's gonna absorb the flavor too. When you freeze the banana, I think it does kind of stall the flavor a little bit of the banana. It is a perfect, consistency and texture for ice cream and it's healthy. It's not made from milk, it's banana. You can even freeze avocados and use that for ice cream. You know, when people say, oh, I can't go vegan, not only is it just because of their love for meat, but it's also their love for ice cream, for sweets, for baked goods, for cookies, you know, all the good stuff that comes with the American diet that we enjoy and tend to feel guilty eating, I guess is the best way to say it. So those are my five vegan food hacks for those of you that are trying to transition into the lifestyle, are on the men, maybe on the fence with it, or uh, maybe, you know, you just want to kind of be a meat eater, have your dairy once in a while, all that type of stuff, but also incorporate these types of hacks and things you can do with your food into your diet as well, add it to your arsenal. Also, if there's something I missed, maybe a hack that you know of that I didn't mention, drop a comment below. Let me know what I'm missing. Don't hold back, share the wealth. And for another video, my name is Brett Cap. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.